Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. And today a friend of mine called me saying that his van is not starting. This is a Ford Ecoline. Let's check it out and see what's going on. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. So let's put the key in the ignition. All right, absolutely nothing. So we had absolutely nothing happening. First thing you're definitely gonna wanna check is the battery. All right, so let's pop open the hood. All right, there's a little lever there. And that should release the locking mechanism for the hood. All right. Here's our battery. All right, this is our positive terminal. Here's our negative. Let's check for voltage. This is the Vito Pro Pack Tech Pack MC. Here's the front pocket. I have everything in order. Here's my motor meter. I am using the Fluke 902 FC HVAC clamp meter. This is actually a book bag. Super great padding on the back. And here's the back side. A little messy at the moment, but believe me, everything is in order. So let's start by putting our meter to volts, all right? It automatically starts in volts AC. This is a battery, so we're gonna be checking for DC voltage. So volts DC, all right. I'm gonna put one probe on one side of the battery and one on the other. All right, you see that 1.5 volts. So when we started this, we didn't even get a light on the dash. There's no way this is gonna start. This has been sitting in the garage for quite a while. And now with temperatures reaching in the 30s, you're just gonna be continually draining that battery. So I have a solution. Inside here, I actually have a battery tender. So what this does is you could actually charge your battery. So what happens is, you know, when you don't start your vehicle, whether it's a car or a motorcycle, I personally have this for my motorcycle, you know, the battery just drains out, but with this, you can get it back up to charge so your system can start. I do have a new one that I wanna try. This is the Die Hard battery charger and maintainer. Text for six volts and 12 volts, and this is the Platinum Series. This one, it looks pretty awesome, honestly, and it had some great reviews. So, to keep things simple, I'm actually just gonna take this battery out of here and bring it home and let it charge. All right, we're gonna pull off the cover for the positive. Just got this cable here. You could just unlock this little nut and this nut and this will slide off and uh, we should be good. Then we have a nut here in the back. I remember changing my battery. I have actually the same car. And I remember taking this off. I couldn't understand why I couldn't get this out. It made no sense. It was like, I was like, man, is this thing glued onto the bottom or what? But there's this little nut right here that holds this in place. So let's begin by taking this apart. All right, so this is the Klein Tools 11 in one. This is actually a 516 nut. So instead of grabbing out my socket set, we're gonna get away with this one. So we just loosen up this nut and we loosen up this nut all right just like that this frees up as you can see then we have this piece here is also a 5 16 so just loosen that up I already loosened up a little bit So this is the piece you want to do so this is what holds the battery together and then from here we're just going to disconnect these just be careful when you pull one out you know what i mean you don't want to ground it so just be safe what i would do is actually pull one out tape it you know you're good you can pull the next one out and you shouldn't have any problems all right so i disconnected this one taped it up let's say we take this one out 
tighten the nut so it doesn't go anywhere. And from there, you can pull out this battery. Let's just put this to the wires to the side. All right. That's it. There's a lot of acid on the bottom of that carbon. looks all right should be okay so we're just gonna leave this as is make sure you know who's positive and all that good stuff when you're putting this back so I'm gonna take that with me use this charger and after some time you know we're gonna check for voltage and see what happens but this is definitely gonna take quite a few hours so that's why I'm taking it with me so I can get out of here and continue along with my day you know that battery level is so low but you know it's really good to keep this kind of tool in your truck so in case you get stuck in the middle of the night or something like that and you really need to get to where you need to go you can have this find you know an outlet where you can or a receptacle where you can plug in your battery charge it up and get to where you need to get going also if you have a friend who can jump start you that would also be great but you know in this case who doesn't want to save a couple dollars let's see what we can do this will be a really cool test but definitely i would recommend just replacing the battery in this sense but so far now we know how to get to the battery how to test it using dc voltage and this is a 12 volt battery just so you guys know and you want to get a reading of about from what i typically see about 12.4 volts even if you're just a bit under 12 volts, it might not start. You want to be above 12 volts. And once the car is started, then you have the alternator, which actually recharges your battery as you go along. So you're good for the next time. Another thing to take note of is you see these connectors here. You actually might have voltage on the battery, but you have a bad connection. So you want to sand this down a little bit, make sure there's no carbon or things like that in the area because that might be preventing you from starting. So you wanna have clean connections and you want a reading above 12 volts DC, about 12.4 to 12.6 should be good to go. And we're gonna take it from here. Let's go ahead and check this thing out and charge it up. All right, so here is the battery tender. You just plug this into any receptacle. And we have these alligator type clips that we will connect here. So we put red to positive, black to negative, and just plug it in. But before we do so, you wanna make sure you have clean connections here. I see there's some kind of gunk on here. So we're just gonna sand this down a little bit and then connect this all together. All right, so we sanded both of these connections down. So we have a good connection for conductivity. We're gonna put our red probe on positive. And then the black on negative, this is color coded. Then we're just gonna plug this in. Somebody ringing my bell. And then let's start this. says analyzing battery. All right, so it's been a bit over 24 hours. And let's see, it says fully charged. Auto maintaining. All right, so let's go ahead and test this with our multimeter and see if we have a 12 volt reading. All right. So we're gonna set our meter to volts DC, red on positive, black on negative. Oh man, we actually got 13 volts. That's great. So from my experience, we need a bit over 12 volts to get this started. This charger, I, I actually checked voltage while it was charging and that's the voltage we got, about 13.1 volts. So the only thing from here is if this can hold the charge 
and that is gonna be up to the battery, but this piece right here did its job. It's definitely a great tool to have. I always leave the links to all the tools I use in this video's descriptions. So go ahead and check that out. But that did its thing tomorrow morning. We're gonna go and install this. Hopefully it holds a charge. If not, we're gonna need a new battery, but we'll run another test in the morning and make the decision from there. So stay tuned. All right, it's a new day. Let's just check to see if this battery held its charge. 13.1 volts exactly, just as we left it last night, perfect. Let's go ahead, throw this thing in the truck and install it. All right, we're back. Before we do anything, I just wanna make sure I clean up some of this stuff in here. This is no good, definitely wanna wear gloves for that. And I wanna have these connections clean. As you can see, look a bit rusty and sticky with something. So let's get that started. This cordless M12 Milwaukee fuel vacuum is awesome. It's actually a wet vac. All right, that looks so much better. So let's get the battery in place and clean up these connections. You really want to get on the inside where it actually connects to the battery. Just keep in mind these batteries are really heavy. So careful not to hurt yourself. And now I'm here climbing on the car. All right, so it goes this way. Let's get the wire out of the way. Drop it into place. Okay. So, back into place. Make sure the red goes to positive and negative goes to negative. All right. Cleaned up the terminals. Make sure this is snug down. Careful with this. saw a light come on for a second here that's a good sign so just tightening this down doing this job for a friend of mine he helped me out with so many things if you're watching this video I appreciate you bro and I'm really glad that I can help he's helped me so many times even where I wanted to give him money he wouldn't take it and of course, I wouldn't take money from him either. And that's a real friend. And I really hope I can get this going for him. Don't forget to put this in because that's what keeps your battery in place. All right, just tighten down that back piece that holds the battery in place. And I guess we could do a little last tight down on these connections, make sure they're snug. And this will do for now. Five sixteens. Really want this to be tight. Don't want this coming loose on the road. Look at that, we have a light. Why is that on? It's one of these doors open that has it on. Well, that's probably why his battery died. Come on, come on.
That's what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about right there. That's the money shot right there. What can I say? I'm a genius. What can I say? <laughs> oh man, I'm so happy right now. This is so cool. All right, so that charger is such a great thing to have. As you can see, it worked. And uh, well, now we know what happened here. Why is his lights on? That's what killed his battery. Okay, maybe that was because his door was open. Oh man, he even got the AC running right now. I want to turn that off. All right. It says oil change required. Hmm. Well, it's been sitting here for quite a while. Okay, yeah, we can see the door was open. I mean, that's why the lights were on, but when you leave your car sitting for a long time, especially in the cold, you're gonna kill your battery. So it's, it's good to have a battery maintainer. And what's even more important is that even if you're not gonna drive the car, you should turn the car on and just let it run for a little while. Let the alternator do its thing and you know charge that battery up. Making a little noise. His belt is making a sound. It'd be a good time to check the air filter which is inside here also be good to you know check your oil Use the oil for this car the oil for the car is right here and just check all your fluids make sure everything is good but that was it so we learned how to check a battery using DC voltage we also saw how to remove the battery we also learned that we can actually charge the battery and you saw how we can install it back again. I mean, look, we're in a parking lot right now. This thing would have had to get towed. That's an expense. You would have had to get it evaluated by a mechanic. That's an expense. And they're not gonna charge the battery for you. They're gonna tell you, you need a new battery. So you're gonna have to pay for another battery. And these batteries for these kind of trucks a little bit more expensive you want something heavy duty this is a v8 engine then they're gonna have to charge you to install the battery then you gotta pay taxes you can't forget about uncle sam right and you know it'll be an arm and a leg at the end of the day when it's such a simple thing that you can do yourself so if anybody found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you all next time